In 2023, we said goodbye to Brick Built Books and hello to school banners with this brand new range of Harry Potter buildable objects. This time though, instead of depicting various classes, we have gone for the good old school common room, starting off with the classic Gryffindor common room. This is set 76409 Gryffindor House Banner. It is one of four to collect and will retail for 35 US dollars, 50 Australian and 30 Great British Pounds starting March 1st. Now straight off the bat, you can probably tell that the concept for this set is very similar to the Hogwarts Moments books that we've gotten the last two years is keeping the theme of three minifigures, a displayable exterior, and a sort of Polly Pocket collapsible interior. I personally really liked those Hogwarts Moments books, however, I don't think this new style turned out as good. Don't forget, if you want to see the rest of the March Wave, you should probably consider subscribing to the channel down below, as I will be reviewing every single set and doing comparisons on a couple of them as well. Starting off, we have Harry Potter, who looks really similar to how he did in the 2020 Room of Requirements set. However, if you have a keen eye, you will notice that they switched out the cardigan design ever so slightly slightly on him. Personally, I prefer the original torso design as I think it looks better and has a little bit more detail, but at a glance you can barely tell. The rest of Harry though is exactly the same as normal. Next up is Neville and I'm really glad we got him rather than another Ron or Hermione minifigure because I feel like I'm kind of getting over them at this point. However, I still think that they could have been a little bit more of a unique choice like having Dean Thomas in the set or Ginny or even Percy Weasley I feel like would have been really really good. Neville is sporting the robes and annoyingly in this set he was given and plain black legs. I'm really disappointed that we didn't get some sort of robe printing on the legs, especially given how versatile it is across the Harry Potter theme and the fact that we already have the print that matches. Lastly is my favorite inclusion for the set, Angelina Johnson. It is so good to see the character selection expanding in Lego Harry Potter and better yet, getting more skin tones and cheaper sets and not just having those characters thrown into $500 trains for no reason. Either way, I am super excited to get her and replace the custom version I made and have her be a part of my proper Gryffindor Quidditch team. Her head print to my knowledge looks new, although I have a feeling that maybe this could have been in the Lego foosball table set, and her torso luckily is a long-awaited revamp of the Quidditch sweatshirts, which personally is something that I have really been looking forward to seeing in Lego Harry Potter. The printing of the torso is far more refined and intricate than the 2010 versions from that Quidditch set, and is something that I hope appears in more sets down the line, maybe even a remade Quidditch set. On the display side of things, the banner looks really good, but it is definitely going to have to be hung up on a wall since it is very flimsy at the bottom and cannot stand up on its own. Which luckily this set does include a brand new plate that allows you to hang it up using a nail or a screw or whatever. There is a pretty big hole at the top so you should be fine to find something in order to hook it on your wall. It also has this gorgeous printed Gryffindor plate which I think looks fantastic and is actually originally from some Disney princess sets and I think is the perfect part to put on the these banners and having it be printed as well just makes it look so much cleaner especially from the exterior and is great that you don't have to apply a giant sticker and worry about messing it up. However the banner design starts to go downhill as soon as you start looking at it from other angles. The top looks fine however the sides and the back just look really really unfinished. Now the back especially I mean I feel like it could have been nicer just to have something make it a little bit more enclosed rather than just have that like 3D thing hanging on the back. The sides however I will, you know, give some leeway since that is, I guess, like the whole point and the whole play feature is that it opens up. However, in Gryffindor's case, I really wish that we didn't use these light brillowish grey bricks on the side and instead made it blend in a little bit better using some tan pieces. As for the playset side of things, you open it up like so and this is it. If you're feeling a little underwhelmed, don't worry, that is normal because I really feel the same. Once you place it down on a table and take out all of the accessories and sort of place it around, you start to feel a little bit better but also you realise how how plain and lackluster and I guess essentially boring this set is at its core. It has all of the aspects that you would expect and want out of the Gryffindor common room and sometimes even a little bit more but it still feels incredibly empty. The top corners for me especially feel very unfinished and just like something is missing there which is really disappointing considering I guess like how nice that centre section looks of this build. And the token 3D image card looks really cool however most of it is covered by the actual pieces. Though my favourite parts about this set is firstly this giant stickered window pane. I think this looks fantastic and illustrates the rest of the castle really beautifully. As well as this bookshelf sticker that references the Remember All and the Herbology Hogwarts Moments book which I thought was a really cute and meta sort of reference. The crest at the top of the build also looks really good however it is the reason I guess that the rest of the sides are a little bit unfinished as when you fold it in it sort of starts to cut off which is really frustrating given how the top section looks here. The fireplace has serious black lurking in 
the flames thanks to the 3D effect and at the very top as well you can actually see a Thestral flying in the sky. Another thing I like while it is small is the curtain build on the right hand side. I think it's really neat and would have been awesome if we could have had another small build of that somewhere else in this set. It's also really cool to see how many of the exclusive Harry Potter molds made it into this set. However, I really feel like it sacrifices a lot of the overall build structure when it comes to this design. And speaking of the build structure, that is really where this set is let down because of the fact that it is supposed to fold into a thin skinny banner that you can hang up on the wall. It means that this build is overall just so two dimensional and so flat. I kid you not, it is no thicker than like two studs wide, which leaves me with a feeling that this set is just incredibly cheap when really it's not. I can see kids having fun with this for a little bit, but at the same time, I can still see them getting bored of this really quickly. As at the end of the day, this is just a decorated wall. There is really not that much to it. And even though it sort of follows that whole like dollhouse effect, I think you are gonna get much better play value. And again, even display value out of one of the actual Hogwarts castle sets. I think this set is best when it is closed up as a banner, which really is disappointing considering, I guess, like how wasteful then the rest of this set becomes. And also it just completely disregards it as a play set at that point. If you really love the banner look or you're just a really big fan of Gryffindor, I certainly think it's worth picking up, but only when it's on sale. As if I was you, I would not pay full price for this. Unfortunately, I paid more than full price for my one, but do not spend that type of money on this set. I feel like you would be much better off putting that money towards a different Harry Potter set, whether that be the Triwizard Tournament or the Room of Requirement, or even, I guess, like some of the Summer Wave, or better yet, some of the giant Harry Potter D2C sets. When it's closed up, it's cute, and there are some cool stickers and pieces, but it is certainly not buy at full price or day one cute. I would wait for this to at least go to 20% off before purchasing. But let me know your thoughts on this set and this new sub theme in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing down below for more Harry Potter set reviews. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.